so I just I woke up from a dream I this dream I got almost a couple weeks ago probably a month I believe and I just never posted it because um, I wanted confirmation from God and I wanted to make sure if he really wanted me to post this video on YouTube so in my dream I was sleeping and then I was I I, I knew that God could hear me so um, it was kind of like a vision, so I asked God if there was anything he wanted me to sh anything he wanted me to share with the world Anything he wanted me to share and then immediately after I said that I went straight into a vision It was me in a hospital and I saw How God turned things around for a good even though the devil meant it for him So I saw I think I saw like black shadows in the hospital, but God was like there and he was protecting the people. So I think there's times in our lives where even though some people are not Christian or they don't have a relationship with Jesus, he still protects them. Then I went into another vision. I saw this young boy, he was a black male. He had dreads and he was smoking a blunt. And I saw that he had died somehow. I think he died in a car crash or something because it's just like he died and the camera the view was just on him the whole time and i just had a knowing that he had died and as soon as he died he landed straight into hell and when he got into hell i just saw the blunt that was in his mouth get like yanked out and then it pans straight to kobe bryant and i saw kobe bryant's face his face was so small it was so skinny well, i saw them sitting on these steps it was like these steps and how it was like these steps and um, I saw Kobe Bryant he couldn't breathe he was coughing and then I saw Michael Jackson he was right next to him like on his right side and he had on his red outfit I guess that he used to wear when he was still living and he was coughing as well he couldn't breathe and then it pan. Um, I also saw this little girl, and she was not Gigi because um, she didn't look like Gigi. Gigi, I know she's light skinned, but the girl that I saw, she was dark skinned. She was kind of like my complexion, and she had single braids in her hair, box braids, and she had on glasses. And she had to been the, around the same age as Gigi because she looked very young. And she was also there in hell as well. And she couldn't breathe either. I've seen um, videos where people have said they've seen Michael Jackson in hell. He was dancing and these demons would be torturing him. And I didn't see all that because I think the Lord doesn't show me those things because I always ask him not to show me those types of things because i honestly just don't want to see it so i think that's why he always shows me surface level type things not like the deep things because i honestly just don't want to see it i always ask him not to show me it i'm not sure exactly why god showed me kobe bryant and michael jackson um and this little girl because honestly I'm not into sports at all. Kobe Bryant was like the furthest thing in my mind, to be honest. A lot of people idolize celebrities. And I always get dreams of celebrities. And I have plenty of dreams on so many different celebrities. And I've never really shared them because I always want to get confirmation first. Which is why I think I waited so long to share the Kobe Bryant and Michael Jackson video. But I think it's also because I once was very um, entertained with the entertainment industry. Singers, mostly singers, because I used to want to become a secular artist. So I think that's why all these artists that I used to love so much, he's shown me dreams of like literally every single last one of them. I try not to listen to any secular music because I know that God doesn't want us listening to secular music. I know that for a fact because he's given me a dream about that which I hope I can share one day as well. But, like I said, I think the reason why he gave me the dream about these celebrities was because 
um a lot of people idolize these celebrities and they want to be just like them they want to be rich they want to live in a nice house they want a lot of money they want the fame and the fortune that comes with it and i can understand that but once you start seeking things of the kingdom your perspective on things change and you no longer really want those type of things anymore it all starts to become clear and you start to see that it's actually fame and it's not really of god a lot of people did idolize kobe bryant and a lot of people did idolize michael jackson as well i know this for a fact i know when michael jackson passed away i think i've even heard people say they've killed themselves because they were so sad i'm not sure if that's true but i knew this morning girl she was crying because she was this I guess she idolized him so much that she was so upset. And I understand if someone passes away, then you know you can become sad. But a lot of people really do idolize a lot of celebrities, and you really have to understand the importance of idolizing somebody because when you idolize anything that's not Jesus, it's an idol, and that's like your god. You cannot idolize people. People are not meant to be idolized. I remember I used to audition for American Idol and I auditioned I think three times. Once in person and twice online. And my latest audition was I think last year. And you know I didn't realize it but I guess God didn't really open those doors for me because I mean if you just look at the title alone you'll understand. It's called American Idol looking for the next big idol god doesn't want people to become idols um he doesn't want his children to be idolized by anybody because we're not all that we're not meant to be idolized by nobody so if there's anybody in your heart that you can think of right now that could be taking the place of jesus that's probably an idol it could be video games it could be sports, it could be exercising, fitness, it could be whatever it is that you do, it could be that. It could even be a relationship. That could be your idol right there. So you need to make sure you get all idols out of your life because there should be nothing above Jesus in your life. If Jesus is not your first priority, then you probably are making an idol of something else. Jesus should always be number one. And if he's not number one, then you need to reevaluate your life and try to figure out what is stopping me from making Jesus my number one priority. He should be the first person in your life. So for example, when you wake up in the morning, um, is the first thing you grab your phone or is the first thing you grab your Bible? he deserves to be the first person at the top and so just try to reevaluate yourself and check and check your heart and just see if there's anything that's putting that you're putting above jesus before jesus when you idolize somebody you're literally doing you're uh, doing what the bible says not to the bible says in the commandments thou shalt put no other false god before me um, so that means there should be no God in your life besides Jesus. And if there is a God besides Jesus in your life, then you have made an idol. And that is not of God. That is a sin. So you need to check yourself. It's so very important. And try to make sure you can change that ASAP. Maybe a lot of people think that just because you're... A good person or just because you're nice or you've done a lot of good things in your life that you get to go to heaven that that's your ticket entry to heaven okay i don't believe in the one saved always saved doctrine but i also don't believe that you don't get into heaven by being a good person it says in the bible that no man shall enter to the kingdom but no man enters to the kingdom but through jesus jesus is the way to life he is the way the truth and the life and if you don't 
connect yourself to Jesus, how do you expect to make it into his kingdom? It's his kingdom. So if you're not even a part of him, how do you expect to one day pass away and just go to heaven? So this is a good way to explain what exactly I'm talking about. So say for example, you there's this this guy he has a really big nice house right and you just come out of nowhere in your car you drive up to his house you knock on the door and you're just like hi will you let me in i'm a really nice person like i like dogs i'm so nice like you should just let me come live with you forever what do you think that guy is gonna do he's probably gonna look at you like who are you and how do you how did you get here that's kind of what it's like with Jesus. He loves you, but he's not going to let anything that is not of him into the kingdom. You have to be a child of God. You have to do what he tells you to do in the Bible in order to make it into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to read some Bible verses that kind of back up what I'm saying. Mark 10, 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Matthew 7, 13 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Good tree, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Meaning Okay. Every tree that bringeth forth not good not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. You shall know them by their fruits. Not everything not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rock is Jesus. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, which is Jesus. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The Bible is here for a reason. It's here to teach us. It's here to show us the way in life. The Bible is literally your food, your spiritual food. You need to read the Bible. It will tell you the things that you've been looking for and the things that you need to know about God. There are so many things in there that, there's so many questions that you probably have, but the Bible answers a lot of those questions in every season and in every area of your life. Read your word, seek Jesus daily about things like this because he will teach you if you really wanted to know the truth. So just how you know here in the physical world, you eat, right? You eat food and you drink water, juice, I guess. Here in the natural world, that is what you do to basically survive. But in the spiritual world, your spirit needs the word. That is the food for your spirit. So when you read the word of God for long periods of time, it's like you're on a buffet. 
you're just eating you're eating all this food right because you're sitting and you're eating for a long time the more you read it but if you just open up your bible let's say you only read one minute a day that's literally like you're coming getting one bite of food and then you leave that's not going to sustain your spirit long enough throughout your days so it's important to read your word daily for at least 30 minutes a day you can start off 30 minutes i would suggest an hour but try to start off with at least 30 minutes and then try to work your way into an hour every single day you know i'm trying to be realistic because a lot of people are just gonna if you tell them to read the bible for an hour they'll probably be like a whole hour that's way too much so maybe start with 30 minutes and then try to work your way into an hour because i think that's the way i started I started with 30 minutes and then I started to read the word for an hour. When you read the word, it's literally spiritual food to your spirit. So that will help you very much. So say for example, you used to smoke a lot, right? You used to smoke or drink a lot. When you read the word, that is your spiritual food. That will help you gain strength in the spirit because it's your food. So say for example one of your old friends come by and be like hey let's go smoke right so you would be able to deny that because your spirit is stronger than your flesh and is stronger than your flesh so it's able to say no but if you don't read the word if you don't spend time with god when stuff like that happens you'll easily just be like oh yeah sure okay cool so that's why it's so important to read the word. The person you should want to be like is Jesus. Jesus should be that person where you say, when I grow up, I want to be just like Jesus. Or right now in my life, I want to be just like Jesus. Jesus should be that person. You should not ever put someone else there. Don't ever put another celebrity or some rapper, basketball player, don't put that person in the place of Jesus. Let Jesus be that person. Do what Jesus did. You have to really put this in your head because not a lot of people will tell you this, but this world is not our, our home. It's not gonna last. It's It should not be where you put all your dreams and all your hopes here on this earth, where you're just like, I want a nice house, I want a nice car, I want a nice career, I want to be successful, I understand that. But don't just let that be the only thing you think of. The Bible says to store your treasures in heaven because this earth is not going to last that long. It's not going to be here forever. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never pass. So what that means is his word will always be here, but heaven and earth is not. There's going to be new heaven, a new heaven, and there's going to be a new earth one day. For now, in this time, this is not our home. You need to try to put your focus on heavenly things. Try to put your focus on the kingdom. Try to be about the kingdom because you're here. The reason you woke up today is because God is not done with you. He has a plan for your life. It's up to you whether or not you want to fulfill what Jesus has called you to do. You can wake up every single day. He can wake you up every single day. Having, having a plan for you, having a purpose for you. But it's up to you on whether or not what you choose to do with that day. The Bible says he's given us free will. So he's not going to force you to read his word. He's not going to force you to spend time with him. He's not going to force you to do these things because he's given us free will. Because if he hasn't given us free will, then he wouldn't be a just father. Because then it will be forced and it wouldn't be done out of pure intention. So whether you're just waking up or you're about to go to sleep, choose who you will serve this day. Choose this day whom you will serve. Is it Jesus? Or is it money? Is it the world? Is it your career? Is it college? Is it your friends? Who are you serving? Is it Jesus? Because if it's not Jesus, then that's not where you need to be. You need to be focusing on Jesus. If you look around right now in the world that we're currently living in with the pandemic, you know, this stuff that's going on, 
you can clearly see we are definitely living in the end times. The rumors of wars and the famine that's about to come, the, shoot, the food shortage that's about to come. In my food shortage video, if you haven't watched it already, I got a dream that's related to the food shortage that's about to come on this earth. So I would recommend everyone to start storing up on food and water because there will be a time when there's not going to be much. And, you know, imagine if, let's say, tomorrow, right? And they're just like, hey, there's gonna, we're going to go back into another lockdown. And this time is going to be long, longer than the first time. And, um, oh, by the way, all the stores are going to be closed. What would you do? Everybody is going to run to that grocery store and try to get as much stuff as they possibly can. They probably are going to try to get more than they did the first time. So everything is probably just going to be gone. Imagine that happens like in 42 hours or 24 hours. You, you ain't never prepared for it. What are you going to do for you and your family? You need to go ahead and try to do this now while there's still time because this is coming. It is inevitable. The Bible talks about famines and pestilences. This is all prophesied thousands of years ago and it's now fulfilling here on the earth. Everything is coming to pass exactly how Jesus said it would. And I think the reason why he showed me the little girl and I didn't see Gigi was because he was trying to give a message out that children can go to hell. It is possible. So whether you're 13, she looked like she was 13 years old. Like that's the age that I'm thinking she is because she just looked like a 13 year old. Even though I don't even know who she was. Kids can and will go to hell. As sad as it is, if you're not connected to the vine, which is Jesus, you will not make it into the kingdom. The Bible says that he is the vine and we are the branches. So if you are not connected to that vine, which is Jesus, and your broken branch that fell on the floor, you will be collected and tossed into the fire. That is hell. You need to make sure you are connected to the source of life, which is Jesus. You need to make sure your vine is connected to the vine, your branch is connected to Jesus. So if you are a young person, possibly 13, around that age group, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus because if you don't, just because you go to church or just because you're nice or just because you sing on the choir in the church, that's not what's gonna make you get into heaven. You need to make sure you're connected to Jesus. You have to have a personal relationship with him. Meaning, have a relationship with Jesus, pray to Jesus, talk to Jesus, spend time with him daily. Make sure you do what the Bible says. So don't be out here doing drugs because you have to remember that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit will dwell. So you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Don't be out here smoking. Don't be out here drinking. Don't be out here partying. Don't let bad words come out of your mouth. The Bible says that. So that means no cursing. Respect your parents. Don't be out here disrespecting them. You're not out here on these streets acting wild and acting crazy. Don't be that person because you never know if today could be your last day. You never know what's going to happen. So you need to make sure that you're constantly connected to Jesus. You need to constantly make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you're watching this video right now and you want to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you want to accept Jesus into your heart and you want to invite him into your life, then please bow your head and repeat after me, okay? Come with a repentant heart. Come with a heart to just lay it all down at his feet and just truly accept him, okay? Truly invite him into your life. So... You can repeat after me, just bow your heads and you can repeat after what I say. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I come before you today and I ask you, for, and I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins, for all of my known and unknown sins. 
please forgive me for all of everything that will cause me not to enter into the gates of heaven. Please forgive me for anything that will stand against me in the courts of heaven. Please write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. If there is any blood stained on my hands, please wash my hands, Jesus. Please wash my garment clean in your blood. Change the person who I am. Change me and mold me into the person I have created. I am created to be. If my personality, my characteristics, anything about me that was tainted by the devil, please change me back to the person you initially created me to be. Create in me a clean heart. Renew my mind. Change everything about me that's not like you. Help me to be more like you. Help me to walk after you. Please prepare me for your return. Sanctify me. And get my heart ready for you, Jesus. Jesus, please protect me from anything and everything that will harm me or cause me not to seek your face. Help me to come closer to you in these last days. Help me to be used by you in these last days. Give me the boldness to share the gospel with others as well. Let your will be done in my life and through my life. In Jesus name. Thank you for all that you've done for me. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. Help me to be more just like you. And please help me to seek your face more and more in these last days. Prepare me for the things that are going to come. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and with fire. And please help me find a place to get baptized with water in your name. I pray all these things in your mighty name. And I thank you for the things that you're going to do. And I thank you for giving me this chance to come and invite you into my life. In Jesus' name I pray.